Good morning, good morning. My name is JJ Bond, and I have the privilege of serving as one of the pastors here at Simple Church. And I just want to thank you for jumping online to join us for service today. I will actually be preaching from John 16. So if you have your Bible or an electronic device, you can make your way there. And we're actually doing something pretty interesting this weekend. I'll be teaching online and Russ will be teaching live at our campus, but we are going to post that service on Monday. So hopefully you'll tune in for that as well. And you'll get two takes on John 16. What has God been teaching me through John 16 and what has God been teaching Russ? So that's kind of cool. You'll get to hear from both of us this week. So with that being said, I really want to zone in and focus in on one verse. And just to set the context a little bit, uh, around this verse. We have been journeying through the Gospel of John. So it, it doesn't matter if you haven't been with us the whole time, that's fine. This will apply to anybody and everybody today, but we are in John 16, and Jesus is with his disciples, and he's telling his disciples he's about to peace out, and they are going to experience great grief and great sorrow because they are going to watch Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, be crucified on the cross. Why? Well, ultimately, in this passage, they don't fully understand what Jesus is telling them. But Jesus knows what's ahead. And he knows why he is doing this. We believe that God created the world and it was good, right? But man and woman, Adam and Eve, they rebelled against God. And because of that, sin and death entered into this world. But God didn't leave us there. God sent his one and only son into our brokenness, into our messiness, uh, to be the perfect reflection, 100% God, 100% man. Jesus, the Son of God, is the perfect reflection of God the Father. Completely innocent, blameless, perfect, righteous, yet enters into our brokenness because he loves us so much and wants a relationship with us and wants to be with us. So he enters into this broken, messy world and ultimately is crucified on a cross for our sin. We know that the Bible teaches for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Jesus would ultimately shed his blood on the cross for our sin. And as we read John 16, he's communicating to the disciples, hey, I'm about to peace out, but I'm not going to leave you alone. I am going to send a helper. He's not going to leave us hanging. He's going to send us a helper in the form of the Holy Spirit. So the title of today's message is simple. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll understand why. But the title of today's message is Pass on Peace. John 16, it says this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Our peace is in him. And his peace is in us. He wasn't going to leave us hanging. He was going to give us a helper. Just this week, I was, I don't, I can't remember what I was doing with my kids. I can't remember if we were just sitting around the table talking and they said something that sparked a childhood memory or if we were doing some type of activity together and that sparked a childhood memory but the thought crossed my mind man I wish my kids got to meet my grandparents I wish my kids got to meet my dad's mom and dad I wish my kids got to meet my mom's mom and dad because I look back and so many of the things that I do 
it, as a parent, um, sometimes, <laughs> you know, mostly good, I hope, but often sometimes bad as well. But a lot of the things that I do with them are because of the things that my parents did with me or my grandparents did with me. And I wanna, I'm not going to, you know, talk about everybody in the family, but I just as I was preparing this message, I was thinking about my two grandfathers and just what I experienced growing up with them. Because I think we all desire to pass good things along to our children. I think we all desire to leave somewhat of a legacy, a good legacy, right? And I have got that from my parents and I have got that from my grandparents. And I was just thinking about, I'll start with my grandfather on my mom's side and just tell you a little bit about uh, that relationship. Man, the greatest time growing up. I remember going over to their house constantly. I remember working in the yard as a young boy. I remember that was my first job. And at that time, my grandpa paid us minimum wage. I think I was 14 years old, but we'd come over. He'd have us do yard work, landscaping, pool weeds, fun things like that. And he would pay us, I think minimum wage at that time, if I remember correctly, was four twenty-five an hour. So myself, my cousins, my brothers, we were over there working a lot. And he had a pool, but in order to get in that swimming pool, we had to help grandpa out with work. So from the very get-go, um, anytime we were around him, like we learned what it looks like to have a good work ethic. Now, do I fail in that area? For sure. But I remember growing up, I remember one time we were working on the pool and he was a state farm agent and businessman, uh, dress pants, tie, white collared shirt, suit coat, you know, everything. And I remember one time he got home from work, my cousin and I, we were working on the pool and I don't remember what was wrong, something with the pipe or something. And we were digging, we were in the mud. Uh, it was a mess, right? And my grandpa, as soon as he gets home, he comes back and what does he do? He doesn't go in and change. He doesn't go throw on a pair of overalls or work jeans or whatever, flannel shirt, blah, blah, blah. He comes dressed in his suit and tie, takes off his suit coat, hangs it over uh, one of the chairs that were sitting there by the pool, rolls up his sleeves, gets down on his knees and gets in the mud with us to help fix this pipe. That's who he was. And that's something sweet and great that I know he didn't just pass on to me, but my brothers and cousins as well. And then I think about my dad's dad, Grandpa Bond, and some of my fondest memories of him. One thing, I think part of the reason why I am a pastor to this day, honestly, is because of my Grandpa Bond. And here's the reason why. One of the things I remember about being over at his house, and there's a lot of things for both of them, right? But I remember waking up as a kid and, you know, you think as a kid, sometimes like you're, you're always going to be the first one up. I felt like a lot of times I was the first one up at home. You, as a kid, you're like an early riser. But I remember when we slept over at uh, Grandpa and Grandma Bond's house, we were never the first ones up. Grandpa Bond was always sitting in his chair with his Bible open spending time with the Lord. And that's one of the things I'll never forget. And then there was another, there was another thing that he did. It was kind of quirky that when we, when our family would leave the house, him and my grandma would come and stand on the edge of the front porch. Now the front porch probably sat, you know, 10 inches to a foot off of the sidewalk. And they would come to the edge of that front porch. And as we were going, when we were little kids, we'd roll down our window and we'd yell, jump, grandpa, jump. And him and my grandma would hold hands and jump off the edge of that porch and land on the sidewalk. And as kids, we thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Now, here's the thing. You talk about passing it on and leaving a legacy. You know what my kids do when they go visit their grandpa, when they go visit my dad? They get him to the edge of the porch he comes, he stands out the edge of the porch. We're usually at my youngest brother's house when this happens. And as we leave to take off back home to Missouri, 
uh, we rolled down the windows in the van and my kids yell out the window, jump, Grandpa David, jump. And my, and my dad, and he's had both, he's had uh, two knee surgeries. My dad will still get to the edge of that porch um, and he'll jump. It's more like a step now and he's going to be watching this. So I'm probably going to get a phone call or text. Um, but it's something that's fun. And the, I, I say, I share those stories. We all, I think we all desire to leave a sweet legacy and we all desire to leave something good with our kids. And when I was reading this passage, just the whole of the passage, but specifically this verse, and you think leading up to Easter and as we journey through the Gospel of John, like this story in the Gospel of John is a story of love, of joy, of peace, of gentleness, of kindness, just goodness, patience. Like you see Jesus interact with the disciples in these passages. I hope you got the opportunity to read through John or maybe even a couple times. But the patience that he exercises with these guys. And then we get to John 16 and he's, he's like, I got to go. And you're going to experience great sorrow and great grief. And man, when I lost my grandfather on both sides, my, my dad's dad, and my mom's dad, and both my grandmothers, right? Like they had a huge impact on my life. And during that time, we experienced great sorrow, great grief. And even as like, I thought back on those memories, like you tear up a little bit, right? Because you think of those things and you do, I do really wish my kids could be with and meet, you know, all my grandparents but that's not the case. But they get a glimpse of my grandparents and who my grandparents were because of my mom and because of my dad. And they get a glimpse of who my grandparents were because of me. So Jesus is about to leave his disciples, but he says, I'm gonna leave you a helper. I'm going to leave you an advocate. God in you. Remember, I said this at the beginning. Our peace is in him and his peace is in us. Yes, the disciples, they were going to miss the physical presence of God for sure. Are you kidding me? Jesus, the coming Messiah, Jesus, the son of God like he's leaving them, this would have rocked their world, y'all. But he's given us a great gift and left us with a great helper for those who put their faith and their trust in him. And that is the Holy Spirit. Our peace is in him and his peace is in us. And let me read Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Because I think more than anything, my desire is to pass on these things. Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23 says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Let me read that again. You want to pass on something? You want to leave a legacy? Just as I thought of the memories of my grandparents, right? Right? Dude, so much love just swelled up in my heart. So much joy. I laughed. I teared up as I was thinking about some of these things. And so much peace knowing that I will see my grandparents one day again. I will spend eternity with them. Right? Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. This isn't fruits, plural, of the Spirit. This is the fruit of the Spirit. And I want you to think, as, e as we're leading into Easter Sunday, it's kind of the Super Bowl for the church. I want you to think about this. Because listen, I'll tell you what, my family doesn't always experience that for me. My friends don't always experience this from me, 
but we are called to pass on peace. So, in the weeks leading up to Easter, I want to encourage you this. How are you going to pass on peace? You think about this fruit of the Spirit, and as you bite into it, man, people should be tasting the love, the joy, the peace of Jesus. Is that what people experience when they are in our presence? Do they get a glimpse of who Jesus is? Do they get a glimpse of the Holy Spirit working in and through us? So, John 16, 33. Jesus says all these things. He gives them all these things. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Look, y'all. This world is crazy. It has been since the beginning because man and woman rebelled against God. But he is our peace. And we're called to pass on peace. So may in this season, may we be a church. May we be Christ followers who love well, who experience great joy because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross and great peace in the midst of chaos. May that be said of us when others are in our presence. May they experience the sweet taste of the fruit of the Spirit. Thanks for joining us online today.